the way. Go away. Hey, okay, here we are. So, uh, welcome. We are going to be looking at a little tutorial on some of the kind of foundational concepts of functions in this video. If you are following CMU CS Academy Intro to Programming, this is, you know, somewhere around like unit 2, 2.1.1, 2.2.2, sorry, 2.1.1 through like 2.1.3 concepts on um, CMU CS Academy. Uh, I find that, you know, unit two really comes in hard. Unit one where we were, you know, upping the complexity and talking about just all the different um, types of, of functions that we have to use. And we might not even really call them functions too much in unit one. I don't really recall at the moment. I don't think we did, maybe briefly. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. It, you know, it was a lot of just kind of like learning the, the the basics and the foundations of like, hey, here I can, I can code. I can, you know, put lines in and remember commas and parentheses and stuff like that. Unit two jumps at you with like a really big concept of, of functions and really kind of using them right away. So I wanted to talk about that a little bit here. I know CMU's got a great video too, but uh, hey, you know, you're my students, maybe you wanna hear it from me a little more. So I'm gonna go ahead and talk about it. So the idea of a function is a really core, big, powerful idea in programming. Um, I won't go further than that, but yeah, it's, it's really powerful and in certain languages like even more powerful. Um, but the idea is just that you can create a, a bit of code that you wanna reuse potentially or, you know, kinda edit and change throughout your program. Uh, that's not a great description of it. Um, well, let's uh, let's kind of get to the, the concept of a function and then hopefully it'll make sense as I'm describing it and, and showing it to you. So I'll do a little bit that you don't need to use CMU. You could be doing this in Code Sculptor just as easily. I'm gonna print something and I'll say, hello world. Um, and then I'll print something else and say like, what's up? And that's it. Now, if I run this, uh, nothing's going to happen on the canvas because I'm printing. But in my console, in my console over here, uh, you can see that it printed my two lines and it went in order, right? The first line printed first, second line printed second. Great. Happy with that. Um, similarly, you know, if I want to see the canvas, maybe I make a circle at 200, 200 with the radius and I'll just leave it that color. Um, and then maybe I'll make a rectangle at zero, zero, uh, that's like 100 by 100. And if we run that, where am I supposed, maybe I should be on the bottom left corner here for this video, because we're using the console. Uh, run this, bada boom, I made my circle in the middle on the canvas, made my rectangle up there. Great, we already know what's going on, we know how to do this, you say, right? Well, here's, you know, the first big thing about functions is so I'm gonna define a function here and um, I don't know, I'll call it like print thing. Notice when I said print first, it was like, that's a reserved word, right? It's a special word within Python, it turned pink. I have to make my function something else. So I'll call it print thing. Um, that'll be it, hit colon. And when I hit enter here, it automatically indents this. On line four here, I just made a function header. First, I said, I'm going to define a function. And this is how you define a function in Python. You say like, hey, I'm making some new function, def. Then I named my function. You can name it whatever you want, as long as it's not a reserved word. Um, and, you know, just it's whatever you want to use it for. And then in the parentheses here, I put space for the function to take input that it might want to use throughout it. Uh, in this case, I'm saying this function doesn't need any input, so I'm going to leave the parentheses blank. Now, in here, I'll print, you know, I don't know, something else. Now, if I run this code right now, I will not get any errors, but nothing's changing, right? Hello, what's up? I don't see something else get printed, even though I have a print statement for it. Um, and this is because when you define a function, it is not actually being run. Python works by going from the top of your program 
down one line at a time. So on line one, we run the program. I'm going to print hello world. Line two, I'm going to print what's up. But then once it sees that you're defining a function, it's like, oh, cool. Thanks, you're defining a function. I'm going to do something behind the scenes with that, but I'm not actually going to run the code inside of the function yet. Um, great, we'll keep moving along. Then it draws my circle, then it draws my rectangle. A really important thing to mention about the anatomy of a function is I have my function header up here saying I'm defining a function, the name and the input. Uh, I have a colon saying, hey, we're going to start describing what the function does. Underneath that function, indented shows what is actually inside of the function, what I'm defining my function to do. I know that I'm outside of the function when I'm no longer indented. It doesn't matter if there's a space here or not. If I'm not indented, line six is not in the function. But if I do hit tab or space three times um, and indent it here, now when I run the code, you'll notice my circle's not there because the circle is inside of the function. So that comes to the last part of kind of the anatomy of a function, how, what you need to know to be able to use them, which is the function call. So we have function header, I'm defining a function, name of my function, here's the input, which we haven't talked about yet. Uh, and then the body of my function where everything underneath it that's indented directly below it, that's what the function will do whenever we want to use it. And now finally here, I can do what's called a function call. To call a function, well, just like you'd call a friend, you say their name. So I'm going to say print thing. Hey, print thing. I want you to, you know, I'm calling you function. I want you to do your thing. Uh, you always need to include the parentheses to give it the input it needs. This doesn't need input, so I can just leave it like that. And now when I run this program, it's going to say, hello, what's up, something else, and the circle will print. Great. Wow. Amazing. Um, now, you know, there's a lot of reasons and it is very valuable. It might seem kind of silly to do right now, but, uh, you know, we'll get there as, as we increase the complexity. There is one other thing that I want to mention, which is my function occurs when I make the function call. So if I cut my function call from line nine and I put it up above line one, take a look and see what happens. We can run our code. Oh, well, here's a thing. Python um, does not compile before it happens. So really what you need to do, all of your function definitions, uh, you need to put at the top of your program so that it knows what the functions are. So before you call your function, you got to define it. Um, okay, great. And let's, let's rerun this program right now with the print at the bottom of the screen, just so we're like, you know, back to where we were before. Ba, ba, ba. I'll run my program, bada bing, bada boom, it worked. Hello world, what's up, something else. I got my circle, I got my square. This video is going on for forever, I'm so sorry. I'm gonna try to wrap up really quick right now. Um, the only other thing that I wanna mention is, right? Again, I'll say it for like the fourth time, function header up here, the entire function, the function body being in lines two and three. And on line nine, I have the function call. So we're gonna see line one, it's gonna say, oh great, you defined a function. Thanks for that, fantastic. Then I'm gonna to go to line six, print hello world. Line seven, print what's up. Line eight, draw my rectangle. Line nine, call print thing. Oh, that means I'm gonna go up here and actually execute what's inside of that. Um, and so notice, since I called the function at the end, something else was at the end. But if I take this, and this is what I was trying to do however long ago, and I put it above hello world, but still underneath my function definition. And I run here, notice that my canvas doesn't look different because my circle and square aren't overlapping, but something else gets printed first because, well, I do line five first, which tells me to go into the function and print something else, draw the circle. Then I come back to line six and seven and eight and finish my program. So that's the first kind of definition, our first function that we see. Um, and how to call it. Sorry this video went on a little bit longer than I intended it to. I hope it was useful in helping you understand the anatomy of a function and how function calls work.